So with these pieces of the content, you mentioned obviously didn't buy any backlinks, um, haven't paid paid for any backlinks, and they gain obviously natural links. What are some of the things, other things that you may have done within each piece of content? Did you, you know, H1s, H2s, internal links? Is there some things that each piece of content had to have that was like a <coughs> necessity? Uh, H1s, H2s, tables, lists, bullet points, images, internal links, external links. When I'm competing from a place of weakness, I want to beat my competition on every single one of those. And so when I Google, the, the first thing I'll do is Google the keyword I want to rank for, and then I'll open up the top three to five results. And how many words do they have? How many H2s do they have? How many pictures do they have? Internal links, external links, tables. I want to beat them on every, every one of those things. Because what I found is that as long as the quality is, is good, one of the easiest ways to get better user engagement metrics is to create more of it. So if your competitor wrote a thousand words, write 1500 words because all things being equal, the user will stay longer than on your competitor's site and Google will reward Love you it. for so that. More, more, more. Awesome. Now, <laughs> yeah. so, well, obviously, you know, some people are thinking, all right, just get as much content out there as possible, but they are going to listen to this. And I am certain that a portion of people will go, um, content, like just, just like, let's get as much content out there as possibly can in, in terms of quantity. And they miss the first step of like, hang on a second, let's get back to our competitive research. What's the search term that we're going for? What are our com competitors doing and how can we do it better? But what you mentioned is how can we do more, more of what they're doing? Yeah. Really the, those people, the people who just hear quantity are going to lose. It's possible. And I'm not kidding here. It's possible to spend an infinite amount of money on content that doesn't rank or generate any business value. I, I, I've seen companies spend infinite amounts of dollars on content that no one will ever read. Um, and so it has to be good or you shouldn't scale. Awesome. I love it. You're obviously going to need a lot of writers to write this content. Where, like, I want to ask about work, hello. Yeah. What was your motivation behind that? Was that to just have access to a lot of writers? <laughs> Or, yeah, what was your motivation behind this? Uh, so I'm a SaaS guy. Um, uh, and earlier in the conversation, I said I was a SaaS, like a, a sales guy my whole life for, for early stage SaaS company. I was employee number eight at a company that grew to 200 people. I was doing uh, I was doing a lot of fun stuff. And, and that's kind of my background. This whole SEO services thing is kind of like a pit stop. I looked at my career and I said, hey, marketing will serve my skill set better. My, my, my goal is better than a sales guy. So I got to learn marketing. But ultimately, it was to build a SaaS product. So I'm actually six years into my five-year plan where I quit my sales job to learn SEO to use to launch a SaaS product. And sorry, what was the question? The question is, what was your motivation around why you started work LO? So this client that I was publishing 600 pages a month, they would take all of the capacity I could bring online. And so the biggest bottleneck for my agency business growth was how many writers could I hire? And so I ended up spending about 1,000 to 2,000 hours figuring out how to build the perfect system for hiring good, affordable writers very easily. And I think, you know, if you look at the, if you look at the industry, I, I probably spent more time thinking about how to hire writers than, than anyone um, because of this experience and their unlimited budget and our crazy success. And so I also started realizing our community also had the same problems. Everybody struggles hiring writers. Writers submit portfolio content that is heavily edited by someone else and doesn't reflect the content that they'll submit to you. Um, writing's the lowest barrier work from home job, which means all of your candidates, most of your candidates are going to be aspirational. They work at a grocery store, they, work, they dig ditches, and they say, hey, I want to work from home. I speak English, kind of. I should apply for writing roles. Yeah. And, and, and so it ends up being very difficult to hire good writers consistently and I crack the code. Um, and so going back to my SaaS roots, I built a product, I've launched to the community and the community um, has evaluated more than 15,000 writing candidates in the last couple of months. So people can use this to find quality writers based on how they've been audited in their skills and stuff like that, is that right? Yeah, so it's a pre-hire assessment platform. And essentially, candidates come in and you send a writing test to the best candidates. And they'll go ahead and they'll complete that writing test for you. And so when you're making a hiring decision, it's not based off of education, resume, or portfolio that's probably fake. It's based off of the writing test they just took that's only for you. And so you know it wasn't plagiarized. 